Hey, this is Mark Moore, aka Tuxedo Mark, in various places on the internet. It's 11.25 a.m. according to a computer clock on Monday, April 13, 2015. And, uh, this is my review of original Sailor Moon anime episode number 39, paired with a monster, Ice Queen Mako-chan. Uh, this episode originally aired in Japan on January 9, 1993, making it the first episode of 1993. It aired two weeks after the previous episode, so there was no new episode on January 2nd. Um, these episodes aired in Japan on, um, I believe it was Saturdays at 7 p.m. local time. So, Sailor Moon is actually a prime time series, almost. It's almost prime time. Um, but yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> anyway, um, okay, before I get into this episode, I want to note something that I forgot to mention in the previous episode. There was a song playing when they were uh, at the ski competition. Um, it was just in the background. You can barely hear it, but uh, it was called Hoto Kenai Yo. I can't leave her alone. It was a song, a duet between Mercury and Mars. Yeah, it was sung by their voice actors. It seems an odd thing to put in that episode. For, for one thing, because... Um, Mercury barely had any role in that episode. I mean, yeah, Mars did, obviously. But wouldn't a Moon-Mars duet make more sense? And they they just stuck it in there like, like nothing, really. Strange. Strange choice is all that I'm saying. Also, I couldn't find the translation of the lyrics. At least not on uh, Wikimoon. Um, so I don't know what, uh, to, what the song's about. I might have to check, like, animelyrics.com or something, but, um, in fact, let me do that. But, yeah, um, so, th that's all that I want to mention about, uh, that previous episode um okay for this episode okay before I even get into this episode I want to mention that while I was looking up information um I've come to the conclusion that wikimoon.org project wikimoon is a better site than Sailor Moon Wiki, which is at moon.wikia.com. Even though Sailor Moon Wiki was started earlier, in like 2005, versus uh, Project Wiki Moon in 2006, and Project Wiki Moon obviously has less articles, it seems the articles are better written. I was able to find out more information about this episode by consulting Project Wiki Moon versus. Uh, Sailor Moon Wiki, which didn't even have any information about the song from the previous episode. Um, anyway, so, uh, there is a pre-title uh, scene, which is neat. I don't know if there's any pattern to when they do pre-title scenes and when they don't. Um, but, yeah. Okay, uh, Mina and Artemis are hanging out at, with Usaki and Luna at Usaki's house in her bedroom. There was no formal meeting between Mina or Minako uh, and Usaki's parents. It's just that, hey, she's already, you know, she's part of the gang, so, okay. Uh, oh, okay, here's here's the information about that song from the previous episode. Um, anime lyrics translate to this, Can't Leave You Alone. Alright. Uh, I'll just 
quickly uh, check. There is no translation. Okay, if, if anyone knows what that song's about, please let me know. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, back to the current episode. Um, so, Usagi um, tries skating in her bedroom because they're watching uh, like figure skating with uh, like these two Olympic champions or like uh, they're a pair of figure skaters. They're watching them on TV so Usagi tries skating and fails miserably. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Um, Serenity, Princess Serenity was uh, one of the best figure skaters back in the Moon Kingdom and you know ice skating was like the, one of the most popular, if not the most popular uh, recreational activities in the Moon Kingdom, which is interesting. Um, let's see. So, there's this new ice skating ring that opens up, and Misha, one of the Olympic people, and his partner, I forget what her name is, are offering free lessons. And this is because Kunsite has decided to turn them uh, into servants of the Dark Kingdom. Um, people could get in for the free lessons only in groups of five, and while they kind of raised their eyebrows at this, the Guardians don't really question this. Like, it's really odd. Um, it's an odd requirement. But anyway. Uh, oh, starting in the previous episode, and this is going to be a recurring thing throughout the series, Mina often gets some kind of popular saying or phrase or whatever wrong. And that's just her funny thing, is she gets a phrase wrong. It's like some popular, you know, folk saying or, or whatever, she just gets it wrong. And in fact, Mako also got it wrong, I, th I think, or maybe, I don't know. She did something to follow Minako in the previous episode, but uh, that's not really Mako's thing, and she doesn't do it in this episode either. It's Minako's thing. She just gets phrases wrong because, haha, -ha, it's funny, I guess. Um. Uh, as in the previous episode, Ami's like the one that corrects corrects her. Um, I know. Well, Ami didn't really correct her in the previous episode. She just said, "I don't think that really fits the situation" or something like that. But uh, Ami corrects her in this episode, and Minako's always embarrassed. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, the male skater reminds Mako of the crush in her past that broke her heart. Yes, we're doing that again. Um, it seems every cute guy reminds Mako of the guy that broke her heart. This, this is getting old. Anyway, Mako is a good skater and it's mentioned that that Jupiter was a good skater on the moon. They say Jupiter was a good skater yet. Does that mean that they were Sailor Guardians back in the Moon Kingdom? I don't know. But, um... Let's see. Uh, Usagi sucks as a skater. She doesn't remember anything from her previous life. Even though she, she does know she was Princess Serenity in her previous life... Does she not, like, remember all of her memories, or what? They're, they're kind of vague about that. Um, so anyway, Kunzite's plan is to use the skating competition to find Sailor Moon, because apparently Sailor Moon is supposed to have, like, athletic prowess or something. Even though he does mention to the 
Olympic skaters that Sailor Moon is a bit clumsy. But the problem is Suzaki is so clumsy that they don't even consider her. But here's the thing. Misha takes liking to Mako and dances with her, or skates with her, and he feels she might be Sailor Moon. In fact, he... It's weird when he talks to her, he, his lips don't, don't move, and I'm wondering if he's just thinking, you know, come on, reveal yourself, you can trust me or something. And then she's, like, saying something, but her lips aren't moving either. I'm wondering if they're just, you know, thinking stuff, but any, it's kind of weird. But anyway, um, here's the question. If they're looking for Sailor Moon, why don't they automatically eliminate all of the girls that are not Sailor Moon's height? Mako is very tall for a girl, and he seriously considers she might be Sailor Moon. In fact, they, they've got computer analysis equipment. Like... The, the female Olympic skaters like monitoring stuff in some room and uh, she gets so mad she punches the monitor when she sees Misha with Mako but anyway and somehow that leads to an explosion that Usaki barely has time to run out of but anyway um how, why why can't they find Sailor Moon like immediately and this is setting aside the fact that, once again, Sailor Moon looks exactly like Usagi, and Usagi looks exactly like Sailor Moon. They change clothes, that's it. Anyway. Uh, Mako, it, it's funny, Misha can't lift Mako because she's so heavy, but she can lift him like above her uh, shoulders, like what, like maybe even above her head. I don't remember. While she's ice skating, Mako's freaking strong. Yeah, that's awesome. But anyway, I like the music in this episode. There's some some chanting, like some Kai sister sounding chanting going on, and there's also like an instrumental version of Heart Moving, which was the previous closing. Um, uh, credit song by Dolly. Uh, so that was a nice touch. Um, let's see. When Mako's thrown, or, or when, you know, the bad guys attack, and Mako, her part of her skating outfit is ripped, and part of her left boob is visible. Or no, no, her right boob, yeah. <laughs> you can see part of the skin. Um, and even one shot briefly, you can see like the side of her boob. But anyway, um, <sighs> when Sailor Moon, uh, Usagi transforms into Sailor Moon, and somehow she can make ice skates materialize on her boots. Like, is this some kind of new power? That's just, that's going unexplained, or what? <sighs> anyway, I, I better backtrack a bit. When uh, the girl Olympic champion um, gets so jealous that she cancels the free lessons for a day and orders everyone out, everyone leaves except... Mako, who Misha wants to stay, and Usagi, who's determined to get a free lesson in, so she stays behind as well. Everyone else evacuated. And then all of these barriers came down to seal the building. Okay? The ice skating ring is completely sealed. They're trapped inside. Keep that in mind. Um, anyway, so Usagi transforms into Sailor Moon. And she is surprised. She's like, I transformed and I still can't skate? Why is she surprised at that? She is still Usagi. 
Transforming into Sailor Moon does not make her remember her previous incarnation as Princess Sarandi. Why is she surprised that she cannot skate as Sailor Moon? Okay. Shamako has been knocked out cold, right? She's lying there unconscious on the ice. And then the next thing that we see when Sailor Moon's in danger is, uh, you know, Jupiter calling out Supreme Thunder. So at some point, off camera, Mako regained consciousness and transformed, and absolutely no one paid any attention to it. Not Usagi, not Mamoru, or sorry, Endymion, not any of the bad guys, it's just. Yeah, just, okay, yeah, uh, what, what, what's going on over there? Oh, never mind, nothing important. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the other guardians show up. How'd they get in the building? It's a legitimate question, it's never addressed. Also, Luna and Artemis didn't come in here with them. But I think they w would want to be present. But anyway, <sighs> Kunsai is upset that Endymion has once again interfered with um, his plans. Endymion is still on the Dark Kingdom side, but he doesn't believe in letting innocents suffer because he just want he wants to defeat the Olympic skaters and uh, then grab the uh, silver crystal from Sailor Moon. But Kunside is using some black thing from the ceiling that he wants to use to kill everyone including Endymion. But uh, Endymion saves the day by throwing his cane into a thing and shattering it. Powerful cane I guess. And uh, But then he leaves. So, um, yeah, he's still evil, it's just, yeah. Uh, the, the end gag in the episode is Mako sees some random guy and thinks his nose looks just like the one of the crush that broke her heart, leaving the other girls to, like, be in disbelief. They actually do the whole falling over thing in disbelief, and then Usagi's like, come on, Mako, give us a break. Yeah, even she's sick of this. Anyway, that's the end of Disc 2 of the Blu-ray set uh, of uh, Season uh, 1 Part 2. Uh, one more disc left in uh, for Season 1, so we have uh, 7 episodes left. That's it for Season 1. And the uh, Season 2 Part 1 set won't be out until July, so keep in mind that after these next seven episodes, there's going to be a bit of a break in the uh, reviews until the next set comes out. Okay? Um, but yeah, we're heading into, uh, like, you know, in a home stretch, the final seven episodes of the season. Uh, this episode, I would say, is skippable. Okay, it, it's it's filler. I mean, yeah, Kunsai grows more pissed at uh, at Endymion, but I don't think anything really important happened in this episode. It's just another brainwashed humans to get the silver crystal thing, and and uh, Endymion continues his oh he's kind of saving Sailor Moon thing, but he still wants the crystal thing that he did in the previous episode, so I'd say this episode is skippable. Uh, yeah, let, let's call it filler. Um, anyway. Oh, one more thing. How come Mako... Misha wants her to open up that it's not really her first time on ice, so I guess it's something that she might have told him that it was her first time. I mean, she didn't in the episode itself, but from what he was thinking or whatever that she must have told him that off screen but 
if that's the case, and it's weird, Mako asked Usagi, is this your first time on the ice? So I can't tell if she actually has any history in this lifetime of ice skating or not. But if not, then how is she able to remember her skills from her previous life in the Moon Kingdom? And Usagi can't. And did they refer to her as Jupiter when they're talking about her past life? It, it brings up an interesting thing. Did the other girls have other names in their previous lives in the Moon Kingdom? Just like Usagi had previously been named Serenity. Did these other girls have other names in their past life? Will, will that ever be addressed? I don't know. Just something to think about. Um, anyway, it's 11.46 a.m. and that's it. Thanks for watching.